with 47 million people with no insurance, we can't keep saying, okay, somebody else fixed the problem. We've got to all work together. I think there's a lot of young people in particular that don't have health care insurance. I see um, so many children whose health care needs are not being met in our current system. Yes, we're aging, you know, we're the baby boomer generation, and the premiums go up every year like clockwork. You know, having to pay all those expenses out of your own pocket, and, you know, when you don't make X number of dollars per acre, and you got to have more and more acres each year to offset those rising costs. What scares me the most is that I will get sick with something that our limited health insurance doesn't cover and we won't be able to afford it and I will have to go without the care and what will happen to my children if something happens to me. People are worried about a lot of different things. There are millions of people who don't have any coverage and they're just frightened every day they're going to get sick or have a serious health care problem. Many more than that have their health care coverage but the cost is going up. You know, their premiums are just going up year after year after year, so they're worried about how they're going to pay for it. Uh, they're worried if they change jobs, they lose their health care coverage. They're worried if they change jobs and they have a pre-existing condition, if they have a heart condition or one of their children has a health problem, that it won't be covered. People are worried about their own individual circumstances, which is understandable. If you're a farmer, it's almost impossible for a farmer to pay for health care. The cost is prohibitive because they don't have any market power. They can't negotiate a good price. For the country as a whole, what's good about my plan is it brings down health care costs. We've got cost containment in a lot of different ways. Lower administrative costs, better use of technology, making sure that we use the most cost-effective drugs and treatments that are available. There's just a systematic approach that doesn't exist today. I'm actually very proud of the fact that I was the first presidential candidate to lay out a detailed subsidy truly universal health care plan. When you say everything's covered, um, is there, you know, deductibles, co-pays in your plan? Yes, there are deductibles, there are co-pays, and they are dependent on your income level. But basically there are going to be choices available. There will be efficiencies created that don't exist in our health care system today. We're going to dramatically lower administrative costs. The government plays a very important role. The government will set up health care markets around the country. In each of these health care markets, a number of things will be accomplished. First, there'll be choices from which people can choose the health care plan that they want. Some of the choices are private insurers. One of the choices will be the government. It'll be something similar to Medicare. If you have your health coverage in one of these health markets, then you can either leave your job or go to a different job and keep the health care that you've got. There will be an enormous benefit from people having health care from the time they're born until the time they die. And that includes preventative care. Because one of the things that motivates me, me, uh, is that we have 37 million people who live in poverty, not just 47 million people who don't have health care coverage. And I don't, I think every single American has equal worth. And I don't think we should treat anybody as better than anybody else. That's the heart and soul of who we are in this country. I keep hearing people describe me as a populist. If, if being a populist means you feel deeply and strongly committed to regular people having a real chance and not getting run over by big, powerful interests, oh yeah, if that's true, I'm a populist. And when it comes to 47 million of our own people who don't have health care, this is not the time for political calculation. This is the time for political courage. It is the time to stand up and stand up for what we know is right. I think it's great that he came out first. He is the first, and it's. I have been waiting, praying, hoping for somebody on the national stage to say this, and he stated this loudly and clearly. Can we finally say we stand now and forever for every single man, woman, and child in America having health care, universal health care. We will leave no one behind. We will not allow a single family or a single child in America to not have health care coverage and to not have the health care that they need and deserve. I think what America really wants in their next president is to be able to trust their president. And in order for that to be true, they want to feel like even though the president's faced with very difficult challenges that he is a good and decent and honest human being 
who's trying to do what's right. Senator Edwards it seems to have finally decided the time has come to do something about it. Senator Edwards is not going to take no for an answer. Don't you take no for an answer either. Tomorrow begins today. We can take responsibility for this country today. We can take action today because somewhere in America, everywhere in America, people are counting on us to stand up for them. He keeps talking about the right and the truth. And, uh, well, we haven't heard that in quite a while. And I think he'd be one that everyone could say, hey, that's my president, and really mean it and be proud of it.